Hey everybody, this is Captain Kimo, and in this video I am going to show you how to create a HDR image from a Canon PowerShot S90. Now, this video should also work with the Canon S95 and the Canon S100. And what we're going to do is we're going to take three exposures from the Canon S90 to create this HDR image. The three exposures that we're going to create is the evenly exposed image and the underexposed image and the overexposed image. And we're going to take those three images and merge them in Photomatix to create our HDR photo. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to take the exposures for HDR using the Canon S90. Okay, so here we have the Canon S90 and I am going to show you how to shoot a high dynamic range photo using the Canon S90. And this will also work with the Canon S95 and I'm sure the Canon S100. So over here we have a scene from Grassy Waters Park. And this has got some good high dynamic range. You can see the blown out areas in the clouds there. And the foreground is dark so we're going to use HDR to cover those, um, those areas of the photo. To start off what we will do is we will need to set the camera for HDR and the best mode for this will be AV mode or aperture priority you can see the camera here is set to AV mode so we will next go into functions so click onto functions and set your settings um, right here it's set for ISO at 80 uh, auto white balance is on and then here is the bracketing mode so this is bracketing mode off, this is bracketing mode on and we want to have it on so then we will want to change the um, the stops so this is set for two stops and this is correct two stops up and two stops down um, if you want to change it something less you can use the dial here to move around and I believe default is set to one stop up and one stop down and we don't want that doesn't that doesn't cover en enough range for us so we're going to go ahead and set it up for two stops up and two stops down and that will do it for HDR I think the only other setting I would recommend is having it set to RAW instead of JPEG RAW gives you a lot more more range in the files so you can produce a lot more colors and a lot, a lot more light uh, after that we will go into functions off and then we will go into the self timer and I like to use self timer so that it gives the camera a few seconds or a couple seconds to settle in after shooting so the camera doesn't shake or move so after setting it to the self timer for about a couple seconds here uh, you should have enough time for it to stop moving so that is pretty much it for setting up the camera. Now we'll just click the shutter button here and then it'll give the camera a few seconds to settle in. Now it's taking its exposures and it should be done. So let's check out the exposures here. I'll click the play here and this is the overexposed image. You can see the foreground is nice and uh, filled in there this is the underexposed image and this will cover the clouds you can see the clouds here in the back and this is sort of the even exposed image so you can have sort of a, a good uh, good exposure of the highlights and the uh, shadows so that does it for the ticking of the photo let's go ahead and take it into our HDR program and merge the photos together okay so I am on my computer let's go ahead and take a look at the exposures that we took from the park and this is the evenly exposed image you can see the exposure is very good in the foreground and in the highlights uh, the next exposure this is the underexposed image two stops under and this is better for the highlights here or the sky I'm going to use that to get some more detail and color from the sky the next exposure would be the overexposed image and this will fill in all the detail in the shadows so where this is the evenly exposed image you don't get 
a lot of uh, detail in the shadows in the foreground area where this foreground image really brings out a lot of the detail in the foreground so we're going to use the uh, overexposed image to do that okay so let's go ahead and create our HDR image from these three exposures here and we're going to use photomatics to do that and you can learn more about photomatics on my website at captainchemo.com so let's get started okay so I have the photomatics window open this is photomatics and I am going to drag and drop uh, this is my folder here I'm going to drag and drop the three exposures that we took for HDR and I'm going to drag and drop it into the photomatics window and this will give us a uh, an option here to allow us to create our HDR photo so I'm just going to go ahead and go through these uh, basic options real fast this is I'm going to click OK here and OK here and now it's taking the three exposures it's merging them together and it's going to allow us to tone map it which is a way of um, blending all the the colors together to create our one photo okay so here is our tone mapping window and in Photomatix we have presets over here and our settings are over here for adjusting our uh, tone mapping settings and we can go by our presets or we can just start by adjusting the uh, the settings now in tone tone mapping we have uh, three different options to uh, create our HDR photo we have detail enhancer and we have tone compressor detail enhancer will will allow us to create more dynamic photos more creative and more artistic photos tone compressor will create more of a realistic image the pixels and the tones are a little nicer when using tone compressor and I'll use this to create more realistic photos versus the uh, detail enhancer where I'll I'll use detail enhancer for more artistic stuff and more intense dynamic stuff more grungy grungy HDR images and the other way of tone mapping uh, HDR photos with Photomatics is using Exposure Fusion. And Exposure Fusion really produces uh, more realistic HDR photos, but I tend not to use that as much. Um, I'm not as... Uh, I know a lot of people get better results with that, but I don't like using it. I prefer to use just the, uh, the tone mapping options here for Detail Enhancer or Tone Compressor. So. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and just start with a preset. This is how I normally tone map my images. Um, and we will start with a default preset. Or let's see if there's a uh, another preset here that's a little grungier. This is Painterly 2, so we have something a little more dynamic. And I, I, I'm going to go a little, a little crazy on the photo, so just to kind of give you an idea of what Photomatics can do. Um, so we'll start with Painterly 2 and then I'm gonna close out some of these presets and here is strength and strength is just the way of us a way for us to um, get more detail out of our photo uh, more color in the sky and more detail in the foreground so if we were to bring it all the way to the right here um, it'll boost up all that detail and normally when I boost up all the detail I will go into um, micro smoothing here and I will increase that just to kind of because there's some grain there and I will remove all that grain out of the image by using micro smoothing and that looks good I'm gonna close that out now I'm probably gonna bring down the color saturation on this photo a little bit it's a little saturated so I'm gonna bring it down just a, a tad and then maybe bring down the luminosity a little bit it's a little it's a little bright so I'm gonna bring down the luminosity some Next, I will probably I like having my detail contrast up, but we'll we'll bring that down some. And then in light adjustment, um, this will either make your image really really just uh, stand out or keep it natural. We'll we'll keep it natural. And then let's go into the other options here. Uh, I'll bring down the white points a little bit and then maybe bring up the black point and then play with the gamma and you can play with the temperature also tend to have it let's keep it a little cooler there so let's go ahead and close that out and then we'll do the last last options here and let me bring up the shadow smoothness a little bit Okay, let's bring the micro smoothing down some. Maybe get it just a little more dynamic. And now I'm gonna want to maybe brighten the image some. So let's go back to luminosity and maybe bring it up some. 
or maybe not let's go ahead and bring it down and we will adjust the uh, the gamma use the gamma to bring up our photo bring up the brightness of the photo and that looks good so let's go ahead and so that's pretty much it for the tone mapping um, it can be a little overwhelming at first but once you get used to the to the settings and the options it's pretty pretty easy so now we have the option to save this particular preset if we want or we can come here and actually use some of the presets that are saved um, but we're done so all we need to do now is click the process button okay so once photomatic is done processing the photo we can go ahead and just save it so we can go to the file and I'll usually do save as and I'm gonna save it right into the same directory the, the raw files are from and we have the option to save it as an 8 or 16 bit 16 bit is always better but I like to keep it 8 bit because I like to just process it a little faster so I'm gonna leave it at 8 bit and I'm just going to save the photo right there here we have it we have our HDR image so let's go ahead and take a quick look at what we just did so here is our final HDR image and we got this by taking our three exposures from our Canon S90 and we merged them together in photomatics we took these three exposures here this is the even exposure this is the underexposure and this is the overexposure and we took those three exposures and we merged them into photomatics to create our one HDR image. Okay, this covers our tutorial for creating HDR images using the uh, Canon S90. And normally I would go into Photoshop to post process the photo a little bit using uh, Topaz plugins. But uh, for this tutorial, I'm pretty much done. If you want to learn more about my post processing of HDR images, you can check my website at captainchemo.com. I have a lot of videos there for you to learn from. And you can also see some of my latest HDR our photos. So visit my site, it's CaptainKimo.com, and until next time, this is Captain Kimo signing out.